In today's video, I want to talk about why it's important to only make artwork or animations for clients if you're getting something in return, especially if it's money. I also want to address the dangers of clients taking advantage of you and how to avoid getting yourself into situations like that in the first place. Hi everyone, Malachi James here. If you've just discovered me and you're an aspiring artist and you want to hear more art, animation and industry related discussions, make sure you subscribe and click the bell so you're always up to date. Okay, so I think this is actually quite a serious problem for animation freelancers and for other freelance artists in general. Much to our demise as freelance artists, we have a tendency to undersell ourselves. And the way it usually goes is a client will reach out to us and give us a creative task to do, which is almost always too ambitious. And then they ask us for our rates. And it's at that very moment where most artists and animators make the first mistake. Because the hard truth is most artists and animators don't know what their rates are. They don't know how much their artwork is worth. Which results in undercharging and underselling, of course. I believe in most cases, artists see their artwork worth a lot less because they feel guilty for charging clients what they would consider too much of a high price. And this guilty feeling derives from a much deeper problem. And I spoke about artist guilt extensively in a previous video, and I've left a link to that video in the top right hand corner if you want to check it out. Now, after an artist offers a price to a client that's usually too low, the artist sets off to work, slogs away at the job, and realizes that they've undersold themselves, often when it's too late. Then the problems snowball, and when it comes to freelance artists underselling themselves, in my opinion, the biggest problem of all that has the biggest effect on other artists is the fact that it indirectly undercuts other artists. The fact that many freelance artists unintentionally undercut each other is partly the reason clients aren't willing to spend a sufficient amount of money on art and animation, because they know that if you say no, to a low budget that they give you, they know there's another freelance schmuck that will say yes to the same thing. Now, don't get me wrong, there are some fantastic clients out there. I've had some clients who have been nothing short of perfect. They've given me lots of creative freedom, they've paid me very, very well, they've paid me on time, I've had a great ongoing relationship with them, but unfortunately, like everything else, there are a few bad apples. Come to think of it, there are many bad apples. I've had quite a few bad experiences with clients, and the ones I think are the worst are the ones that try to take advantage of you in more ways than one. Clients that ask for multiple revisions of your work and aren't willing to pay you extra aren't worth working with. And clients that constantly micromanage you during the process of creating the work aren't saints either because it actually stresses you out and slows you down. It's counterproductive and when a client is a combination of both, that's a lethal combination. Now, there is a way I've found through experience of avoiding getting yourself into dealing with clients like this and that is to write a very short document of your own terms and conditions that suit you and that can be sent to any client before you start working. Just to clarify, this document will only work if it's a client that hasn't given you a contract, where it's just a simple transaction of them asking you for work and you making it for them and, and they pay you. It is always worth mentioning to the client beforehand in this document that any extra revisions will cost them 
which cancels out any attempt for the client to get free work out of you. I think the only way to solve this widespread problem of freelance artists being taken advantage of and undercutting each other is for us to unite in some way where we collectively refuse to work for peanuts and extremely low prices. Especially because art and animation skills are very, very rare skills to find. I mean, think about it. If you look at other professionals that are also highly skilled and in demand, they charge what they're worth and nobody disputes it. You don't even have to look at doctors and lawyers. Even in the creative industry, there are people that aren't even highly skilled, like fashion models, for instance, get paid so much for less work. Well, of course, modeling is hard work in different ways, but the act of standing in front of a camera and getting paid 10 grand for two hours of posing really puts things into perspective. Other professionals and freelancers know their worth, and most art and animation is very intellectually challenging and time consuming. So we need to know our worth too. Something needs to change. And even if you're just starting out as a freelance artist or animator, don't feel intimidated by all this. Because whether you've left university or you've gained the basic skills you need to kickstart your artistic career, you still have more to offer than you realize. So there's absolutely no need to produce any work for free. With that said, I think it's totally ethical to work for lower prices when you're starting out. However, you should soon enough incrementally increase your prices based on the quality and quantity of work in your portfolio and the demand for what you do. Now, it can be tricky to figure this out. But I find that as long as I follow this basic formula, with time and experience, it only becomes clearer. Sometimes clients, even big companies, will say to you that they don't have much to offer, money-wise, but they can offer you exposure. To that, I say, you've got to question what kind of exposure. If they don't know, and you don't know, that should be a no-go. However, if they make it clear what kind of exposure they'll give you and it lines up with your career goals, then it could be worth considering. For instance, I'm trying to grow my following as an artist on Instagram because it's a great way to gain more future clients. And if a client had a huge following themselves and they wanted me to do a caricature based on their brand that they would post on their profile linking their audience to me, I would definitely consider that seriously as a substitute for money. Again, it all depends on what your career goals are when they offer you exposure. But if a client says, oh, well, if you do this, it could lead to something, they better be prepared to pay up for their uncertainty. I think another problem that lots of freelance artists face when they're just starting out is actually receiving payment for their hard work. I've been fortunate enough to never be scammed by a client, and I've always been paid for my work. But I think the best way to avoid being scammed, if it's a big job that could take a lot of time, is to ask for half the money up front and half once you've finished. I know a fellow freelancer who had been scammed and cut loose right in the middle of a project by a previous client of mine, all because she decided to change her mind about the direction of the project, even though he had done half the work for her. She got away with not paying him anything at all. Had he asked for half the money up front, he would have at least got something out of it, and she would have been more likely to commit to having him animate the project. From time to time, you will find yourself working with depraved clients who are completely inconsiderate and lack empathy. That's just the way the cookie crumbles. But, as I've demonstrated, there are ways of protecting yourself from being undermined and taken advantage of. So you can prioritize freelance projects that will pay you what you're worth, ones that you will enjoy. 
ones that will challenge you in a good way, and ones that will lead you closer to the freelance career that you deserve. I've left a link in the description below to view the finished version of this drawing. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If this video was helpful to you, if you'd like to hear more topics like this or whatever you have in mind. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and share with friends. Stay positive everyone, keep creating and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.